ever since practice this morning, let me tell you, there's been a heavy presence of the Spirit in this place. As we were declaring and singing out these songs today, I just know that the Lord is going to meet us, that He is going to provide everything that we need today. Pray for our body. We got a lot of sick people. We got a lot of blind people dealing with stuff today. So we're going to pray for healing in, in just a minute here. Before we get into it, um, our whole series is is based around some of the principles in our in our in our first song today, which is Graves in the Gardens. We've heard it a million times. We've sung it here a million times. But I wanted to pull up the scriptures that go with it today. And not so much the first part, it's in Psalms 30, in case you want to read the whole thing later, but I'm going to skip down a little bit, because I see something that is vitally important um, in the hearts of believers that we have to grasp here. King David is one of my favorite Bible characters because he was very real with God. He didn't hold back when things were crummy, when things were awful. He let them know about it. He reached out for the help. He cried out for mercy. So I'm going to skip down here in verse 8. It says, When I was prosperous, I said, Nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. But then it says, Then you turned away from me, and I was shattered. But there's hope. I cried out to you, O Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy, saying, What will you gain if I die? If I sink into the grave, can my dust praise you? Can it tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. And he doesn't just leave us there. It says, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy, that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Isn't it good today? Come on! It's the Lord today and the authority that we have through Christ Jesus. We pray for every sick body in this body of believers that it would be restored to full functionality, Lord. Lord, that you would bring the remedies, but Lord, even more so, that we could be uplifted by a supernatural move. That right now, even as we're praying, those symptoms are starting to, to cease and starting to go away. And Lord, we pray uh, even more so for our emotional man and our spiritual man today, that it would be revitalized, that it would be healed, that those dry bones would come alive. Because when we see your faithfulness, not only when we're prosperous in the physical, but when things are not so prosperous, we can still have joy. We can still take off our morning clothes and say, I know that my God came through for me. So Lord, that's what we stand on today. And that's what we're going to praise like today. We thank you, Lord. the world and it couldn't fail me a man's empty praise treasures the faith I never enough and you came along you pulled me back together 
Cause you are good In the morning I see you
You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. In grace. Your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's Your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to You only.
kiss your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only God and great Thank you that you are a great and mighty God, that you reign in all power, in all knowledge, and in all wisdom. Lord, but we thank you that today we can have a conversation with you. Lord, that this gathering of believers is insignificant. You're not a God that's going to turn himself away and ignore us. So, Lord, we thank you today that you are taking those dead things and you're bringing them to life. And, Lord, we know that worship is the preparation ground to show that we're willing and ready to set aside, Lord, the things we came in with. Lord, the sin patterns that we've been struggling with, bringing us to repentance, Lord, so we can be open for the word of God, so we can be open for your word. Lord, we are ready. We want to hear something fresh and new from you today. And we say, just pour it out because you are great, Lord. And we submit and humble ourselves and say, nothing we can do, no thing in this world will ever be greater than who you are, than what you've done in our lives. So today, we want to build ourselves up so we can live that out with the people around us. That it wouldn't just be for us personally, Lord, but that revival and awakening would break out in every church, in every city, in every county, in every state. Lord, that you would begin to move and your spirit would fall as we pray for healing here before the Lord signs and wonders, restoration of mental health, restoration of physical health, the restoration of strained relationships in the name of Jesus. Lord, that the strongholds would fall, the leaders that need to step down
All right, well, a few cutoff heads, but that is Levin Kids, and I am excited to bring the word during Kingdom Builders series deserts to gardens i've never been asked to share during kingdom builders so it's really an honor and that's really the transition and transformation that i get to see up close and personal through Levin kids if you are unfamiliar with who and what Levin kids is all about we're a faith-based organization and we are a hub of help and hope in underserved at-risk neighborhoods usually hosted at low-income apartment complexes uh, in a community room or in a unit that has been converted we are embedded right where the greatest needs are we're available we're accessible and we bring free after-school programming for elementary age children k through sixth grade and we bring together just a variety of partners Partnerships, a convergence from local government to first responders to military, churches, and corporations to see kids and communities rise. And so we are all across Solano County. We are in Vacaville. We are in Fairfield. We are in Sassoon. We are in Benicia. We are in Vallejo. We are in Napa. We are in Concord. We are in Southern California, in Rialto, in Ontario. And now we are in San Antonio, Texas. Woo! Our first site outside of California. I'll be traveling there this week, actually, and it's going to be 85, 87 degrees. So uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be glad for a little bit of a change up. But I want to share about how I got involved over 12 years ago. And it was actually through this church and the re relationships represented here. I initially started as a volunteer. I worked part-time. I would pick up my sons and we would go to 855 East Tabor in Fairfield and we would help with homework. <laughs> and through that, and I'm, I'm just gonna warn you, I'm gonna be emotional through this message, okay? I usually am anyways, but more so on this one. And through that, I saw needs, I was like, can I organize the celebrations at Thanksgiving? Can we do a scavenger hunt? Can I prepare something for Christmas and Easter? And I was doing that there at the Groves and then as well paralleling that in the neighborhood that we lived in and just opening up our home and, and doing outreaches at our neighborhood park. And then it turned into VBSs and sports camps and, and other variety of events and this last Christmas real life church and you can put up the this one right here uh, real life church we were able to adopt a site here in Vacaville East Monta Vista and provide Christmas gifts for all of the children and that's me and my husband there at the Christmas uh, party as well as we bless the site director who is a single mom and she has five children and could not provide gifts for her own family so we were able to be a blessing and then over here is a photo of uh, some kids uh, actually <laughs> Yvonne there to my uh, let's see right on the screen uh, I've known him since kindergarten when he attended 11 kids at Phoenix, uh, I think it was Phoenix Drive or Dana, maybe it was Dana Drive. And uh, these kids, when they were asked what they wanted for their Christmas gift, they, uh, they said, we don't want toys, uh, we want Bibles. And there were very specific Bibles. And so the site director reached out to me and she's like, hey, I know Real Life Church, I know your heart, and um, you know this family, you've known them for years, uh, would you want to purchase the Bibles? Of course, we said yes. And so that is because of your generosity um, and just giving uh, to kingdom builders. And really, a lot of these neighborhoods that we're going into are considered desert conditions. They're dry, they're, they're barren, there's a lot of devastation, there's destruction, there's desolation, there's dysfunction on all levels. There's disappointments, damage, and, and spiritual dehydration. These children come from very difficult circumstances with 
a lot of negative environmental influences, violence, drugs, single parent situations, neglect. They're, they're ongoingly experiencing adverse childhood experiences and they lack often the stability and structure. And uh, during uh, the latter part of 2020 in the fall, we were able to be open during COVID and, and continued to be at some of the sites with smaller uh, kid pods and, and saw a tremendous uh, you know, impact and was able to really bring a level of support needed during that time. But since then, let me just tell you, it's been heightened in the trenches. The mental, social, and emotional effects are overwhelming at times, what kids are coming in with and how they're acting out. And recently, over the last month, I was reviewing incident reports, as I do, because my role now uh, and it has been for many years, is operations. I'm the chief operations officer now. And uh, so I get to review the incident reports and respond and coach. And I mean, there's just fights breaking out at the sites and site directors asking, you know, I need, I need resourcing and training and anger management with kids. <laughs> How do you effectively break up a fight between <laughs> an eight and a nine-year-old? I mean, these are the types of things that I'm being called upon to train. And I'm like, well, you do the best you can, right? Uh, but, you know, it grieves my heart in so many ways. And a few weeks ago, there was actually a shooting at Alamo Garden where one of our site locations are, are at. And it was a Tuesday um, life group night. And so before that, I'm dealing with that. And then, of course, we're praying. And so the very next day, I thought, I'm going to go to the site, check in on the site director, see how the kids are and, uh, you know, just bring a level of comfort and support to them. And so I did that, and as I arrived, things just kind of seemed typical. They were jump roping outside, and I'm saying hi to the kids, hi, and we go inside, and they're having their Bible story. That's how they start at that particular site, giving out snack. And so I'm like, everything's good and calm, and it seems stable here and safe. Uh, so everyone, I'm going to be going, you know, and I say my goodbyes, and the site director goes, does anybody want to share with Miss Renee our scripture memory verses? Hand after hand after hand after hand went up. And one by one, I stood there and I listened to them share scripture that they had memorized. Scriptures like Joshua 1, 8, be strong in the Lord, be courageous, do not fear, for the Lord my God is with you wherever you go. And I was able to say, you know what, that is true. No matter what you're going through right here where you live, and they knew what I was talking about, God is with you. It was all 15 of them not one verse, you guys. Multiple verses. When we go into these neighborhoods, we're sowing seeds of love, of truth. We're creating a safe, welcoming atmosphere in the middle of a desert-type condition that they're living in, and we're inviting them into the garden. We're inviting them to encounter God's presence and His Spirit so that those challenges and those cycles can be broken over their life, so they can transition and experience that transformation from a desert to a garden. And that is the power of the principle of the seed. A little bit goes a long way. That's what leaven represents. It's a big, you know, with bread and a biblical terminology that a little bit causes the whole loaf to rise. And we see this principle of the seed, which is similar to yeast and leaven throughout scripture. And God initiates it in Genesis chapter one, when he creates male and female in his image. And it says that God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Other translations say multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said this, I give you 
every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. He expounds and explains it further in Genesis 2, saying that the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden and there he put man. He placed man right there. In verse 10, it says that a river watering the garden flowed from Eden. Eden, from there it was separated into four headwaters. See, God gives us all the seed that we need to flourish and to be fruitful in his purpose and his promises. He said, look, Adam and Eve, I want you to be fruitful and multiply. But he didn't say, so go figure it out. No, he said, this is what I'm giving to you. I'm giving you a seed. I'm giving you many seeds. And this is what I want you to do with that seed that has that reproducing, multiplying, developing capability. I want you to steward it. I'm setting you in the landscape of this flourishing, fruitful, fulfilling garden to reinforce what you are called to steward internally and externally. Even the physiological makeup of, of, of a male carries a seed that can reproduce life. All the resource you need, the seed, the soil, the saturation of the river that's going to flow through the garden is yours. So cultivate it, guard it, tend it, keep it, maintain the environment so that it can grow. And it can be that garden. And it can be preserved. But unfortunately, through disobedience and through the sin choice of Adam and Eve. They were banished, it says in Genesis 3. They were driven out of the garden. And from that time on, spiritual dehydration in a desert-like atmosphere has overshadowed mankind and the earth that we live in. It's not in its original state. Sin has damaged even the environment, even the creation and so this metaphor of desert and wasteland and wilderness is used repeatedly throughout uh, scripture to describe the state of people because of those sin choices and because of disobedience. But God in his great love, say great love, great love. and mercy, he continued to sow the seed of his word and his promise into people like Abram and Sarai. Oh, they had a desert condition. They couldn't in and of themselves bring forth life like they so wanted to. And God said, I see you and I'm sowing into you a seed of life and I'm gonna give you all that you need to bring it forth. Oh, it's gonna take some time, the betterment of 24, 25 years, but wait for it. Just wait and see what a seed can do. Oh, Moses. The enemy was after you from the beginning, but I plucked you out of that river. I plucked you out and I preserved you and I protected you and God finds him in an actual desert of Midian and reveals himself and essentially says, Moses, what are you doing out here? I'm sending you back. Go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. He's like, who am I? I don't have the personality. I don't have the skill set. I'm a man of stammering lips. And God said, all you need is a seed. All you need is the seed. I'll bring others alongside of you to help. David on the backside, neglected, not even considered by his family to be in the running for a king. He's taking care of sheep. He's the least of the least in their eyes, but God saw and he brought him out from the shadows in to the presence of many 
and said, this is who I'm calling. This is my seed I'm sowing into him. And for 17 years, he, he had to be faithful and he had to fight it through. But he came into his kingship. See, God gives the seed of his word of promise so it will succeed. Write it down. He gives his seed so it will succeed. That's what we find in Isaiah 55, verses 10 through 11. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, void, but will, say will, will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. As we receive and retain and remain in that seed, of the word, it will succeed just like it did in Abraham, in Sarah, in Moses, in David. Now we have to do our part. That's why it's significant when we have the opportunity to gather together in his name, because this is a seed sowing ground right here. You're receiving seed of the word. When I come, I'm receiving the seed of the word. And as you receive it and retain it and remain in it, it will succeed in what God has called it to his purpose it will progress so we need to have a daily discipline of devotion to the word of God maintaining the ground in the garden of our heart and eventually God sold the ultimate seed that has the producing power to bear the fruit of Jesus Christ, his character. God says, I will sow a sinless seed to redeem this process of sowing and reaping. And in 1 Peter 1, 23, we see it all come together. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed. One translation says of, of corruptible seed, but of imperishable, of incorruptible seed through the living and enduring word of of God. And so Jesus came as that seed sown into the world, demonstrating wherever he went that he was the living, breathing flesh word being lived out before them. And so when he saw Simon Peter and Andrew fishing, he said, you know what? Come and follow me because I'm sowing a seed in you to succeed. You're more than a fisherman. I've called you to be a fisher of men. James and John, come follow me. Matthew, you're a tax collector. Nope, this is what I have for you. And over and over and over again, as Jesus would be walking, as he would be teaching, as he would be around and the masses of people would, would press in on him and, and, and lepers would be crying out and falling at his feet when nobody else wanted to touch them, he sowed a seed and said, you know what? Be clean, be healed, be forgiven. Let the children come to, to me. I'll sow into them when you don't want to. And many didn't understand why he was sowing into the specific people that he did. And often people have asked me, Don't you, aren't you afraid when you go into those neighborhoods with loving kids? And I'm not. What are you doing going in there? What good is it going to do? Same with Jesus. People would question, criticize, all they could see was the desert of sickness, of sinfulness, of selfishness, and seemingly uselessness. But Jesus saw differently. And in John 4, verses 34 through 37, we find an account where Jesus is going through Samaria. And he encounters a woman at the well and he sows a seed of truth and correction and a seed of, of prophecy, a word of life to her. And as she receives it, she goes out 
back to this the greater area and greater community and she's telling people look I've met somebody who knows everything about my life won't you come and see won't you come and hear and so as they did Jesus stayed two days and he's he's sharing with them and they say no longer do we believe because of what you have said we believe because we've experienced he sowed the seed in us and so the disciples find Jesus amidst all of this. And John 4, 34 says, Jesus responding to them, because they're like, aren't you hungry, Jesus? Take care of yourself. And he's like, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Verse 35, don't you have a saying, it's still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes. Say, open your eyes. And look at the fields. They are ripe with harvest. What are we seeing right now? Do we see the harvest? Are the eyes of our spirit opened to understand the opportunities that are all around us. Verse 36, even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. What a wonderful pairing. Verse 37, thus the saying one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. We need to see through the potential and perspective of the seed. That's how Jesus saw people. That's how God sees us. You know, when you purchase a packet of seeds, it usually comes like this. There's not a picture necessarily of the seed on the package, right? There's a picture of what the seed will produce. And for many years, growing up as a kid, adolescence, even the whole decade of my 20s, all I saw was the desert me. The brokenness, the insecurity, the rejected me, the doubtful me, the anxiety filled me, the didn't measure up me, the what do you have to offer? But God saw the garden me. He saw a picture on the package. He saw what the seed would produce in me. He saw the healed, the free, the courageous me. He saw the me standing here today. Not only that, he saw the seed that I would then sow. And it took a while. And I'm still working on the picture on the package. God is. But that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about sowing seeds into young hearts. Because I know what it's done for me. And the earlier you can get a seed planted in a young heart, the longer and the greater the harvest. I believe that. I've experienced that. So I honor those that sowed seeds in my life, my parents. And now I get to sow as my mom watches with us every single week here at Real Life Church. And my kids' church leaders sowed into me. And my church community sowed into me. And when I couldn't see it, God said, I'll send others around you who see it. And that's what I pray for myself, for us, Lord. I don't wanna just see the desert in myself or in others. 
in my family, in my workplace, in my neighborhood, in our community, in this country. Oh, I know, it's not that we're denying. It's like a desert, right? <laughs> There's a lot of devastation and desolation that we're seeing. But God's seed can be sown. God's seed can be sown. And if we'll see through that, then we'll keep on sowing. And what I found with each and every level of fruit bearing from the seeds that have been planted, as John 15 says, fruit, more fruit and much fruit, I'm tested in this. Will you see through the principle of the seed, Brene? Will you see the picture on my package? Or will you be overwhelmed by what you see in the natural? Almost a decade ago, before my 40th birthday, getting ready to have my 50th birthday in a few weeks, and I was reminded that during that time, I was praying and I was seeking God on what he had for me in that decade of my life. And I sensed he, call, he was calling me to 40 days of, of fasting and prayer. And that was March of 2013. My kids at that point were getting older I had been a stay-at-home mom for most of their life and sowed seeds into my children. And then I worked part-time. At this time, I had two part-time positions. And honestly, I was very discouraged. I was like, Lord, you know, I spent all this time sowing seeds into my family into my children now, into my neighborhood. I'm volunteering at Loving Kids. I'm volunteering at the church. I'm doing events. But there was a financial struggle, and, and, and I was questioning whether I had made the right decision. I put my career on hold, and I was concerned that we, you know, how God was gonna provide for us in this area. We're from the valley, folks. It's much cheaper to live. <laughs> it was overwhelming. And I was saying, you know, Lord, should I go back to school? I was working for the county part-time. Should I go into another position with the county? What do you want me to do? I'm gonna have time freed up. I'm not gonna be needed quite as much at home with my kids. I saw some fruit, but I was underwhelmed by it. Has anybody <laughs> ever been there? Seeds take time. So actually I called together and I shared this with my husband. We as a family for 40 days sought the Lord because we knew any decision we made would affect us all, including if we decided to leave the area. Spent that time, 40 days, and I actually found this, and I have a I found this, these are notes that I wrote during that 40 days of prayer and fasting and seeking the Lord. <laughs> March 2013, 40th birthday, God says, I'm crossing you over into a season of fulfilled promise. As you step over into the promised land, so to speak, you're also stepping up into a platform that I'm giving you. Cross over the barrier. You are being released from the desert and the wilderness. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3. I've humbled you all these many years to test you to see what was in your heart, Renee. 
to see if you'd keep sewing, to see if you'd keep obeying. Excuse me. It goes on, and I looked up all the times that the number 40 is used in the, in the scripture, in the Bible. And I studied that out all during that time. And you can see that. And God was sowing a word into me at that time. And do you know that after that 40 days of prayer and fasting, I believe it was May of 2013, that Jason and Susan Yarborough contacted us, and we had partnered in VBS and some uh, missions intensives and other outreaches, and they said, hey, let's have dinner. And uh, so we did, and they began to share, and, and we come away, and I, and I came to my husband, and I said, I think they might be transitioning, and they were trying to kind of fill us out to see if we would, you know, maybe want to be part of that. My husband's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, just a few weeks later, yes, that initiated this whole merging between two churches that, that occurred during that fall where we inherited Fairfield Christian School and we had the opportunity to sow more seeds into children and it was the next year in 2014 that I was offered the operations director position at Levin Kids. And at that time, there were six sites to oversee. And, and I was contemplating and I, I was saying, Lord, I just don't know because I, I don't really want to give up my county job. I'm going to have no benefits. I'm not going to have any. It wasn't full time, really. Is that what you want for me? And God said, yes. And so I took that position and now we have over, I, I wanna say 20, 22 operational sites. It's tripled you guys in the, in, the, in the time that I took operations till now. I've met people I never thought I would meet. I've, I've spoken in public venues before hundreds of people that I would consider influential people. Me, who am I? It's been very humbling. And I'll just tell you that all those seeds for 20 years that I was sowing, that nobody else a lot didn't see. They didn't see me researching all the crafts for VBS on my Friday nights and Saturdays. They didn't see that. They didn't see the prayers and the worship going forth in my personal time for the, for the region. They didn't see that. They didn't see all the accumulation. They didn't see me going and praying with people on the spot because there was a need in these neighborhoods. But God saw. God sees it, you guys. He sees the seeds that we sow, and that brings security for someone like me who was very insecure of how God was going to provide. And little by little, and as I reflected over this decade and all the concerns that I had, when, would we be able to help our kids if they, if they wanted to go to college? Would we have anything when our kids got married to be a blessing? And that's been a resounding yes. Because of seeds sown. And I'm so glad that God would remind me over and over again, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. Remember this, Renee. Remember this, Renee. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. 
Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. I'm so glad that I didn't sow sparingly all of those years. I sowed when God said so. Verse 7, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And all of those years, and it continues to this day, we sowed financially, giving our tithe. We had to cut back on other areas. I often say we ate beans a lot. We didn't go out to the movies when the kids were younger. Ask them. <laughs> They're bringing it up now. They're like, and I'm like, we were on a budget. <laughs> when we went to Disneyland, how come we had to share a meal? Because tithe came first before Disneyland meal. So sowing generously, giving of your tithe, offering what we could, opening our home, letting kids and youth gather, having life group in our home. We sowed our home for the use of God's glory. I sowed at this church week after week after week. Where's the need? Where can I sow, Lord? And what a blessing because this church is sowed into me and not my family. See, we sowed, but we were also sown into and we continue to be. And so all of those well-rounded areas, that's why I say, when you look to sow seeds, do it in all the areas, multifaceted, in people, in your finances, in the skill set that God has given you, even in your weakness. I didn't know what was in me until I stepped into the yes. Little did I know planning all of those events was actually preparing me to be an effective operations director, by which on paper I had no experience. <laughs> but I had sown seeds. This is just how good God is. Verse 8 of 2 Corinthians, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered the gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. And that's what me and my family and this church has done for many years in these neighborhoods. We've scattered seed to the poor. Verse 10, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will, will result in thanksgiving to God. I have lived this and experienced it. And I'm sure those of you that have been sowing into God's kingdom have testimonies as well. But do you know over the last decade, our entire family was employed by 11 kids. We didn't know we would need to be. God did sow the seed. Many of, of the youth that we sowed into ended up working for 11 kids. Many of you went out with us into the neighborhoods and sowed seeds with us. And God has enlarged our harvest and he keeps supplying and he keeps increasing to us, Real Life Church. To now, there are hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of children that have been sown into. Daily Now I get to equip others to be site directors, oversee the programming, and to sow seeds of God's love into them. 
And I know it can be counterintuitive. Well, if I give, then I'll have less. Not in the kingdom economy. When you give more, you get more. That's not why we do it, but that's how good God is. And it may take time to do it his way. It did for me, I'll be honest. And I'm sharing this not so, I don't want you to fall into the comparison trap. Do not compare your life to mine and how God has asked me to sow seed. But I do hope that my life and the seeds that I have sown will challenge you and convict you if needed. God was asking me to sow a lot because he was going to trust me with a lot. And so as we do it with the right motive, he sets up a harvest for us when we're not even expecting it in a way that is meaningful to us. And again, that's not even the harvest I was asking for. I always thought I'd be alongside my husband in ministry in the church. That's what I wanted. And I am in a volunteer capacity. (laughs) But I get to pastor (laughs) in a community context. I didn't even know that that was an option. (laughs) So as we conclude this time, someone can come to the keys. Thank you. And can we just stand to our feet? Because I'm at the threshold of another decade of life, and I'm asking the Lord, where do you want me to sow? And we're at the conclusion of our Kingdom Builder series from Deserts to Gardens as a church community, as real life church. And we're asking him, where do you want us to sow? Personally, financially, collectively as a church community? What children do you want us to sow into, Lord? What youth? What people? Some of you are sowing into your grandchildren. There may be great grandchildren that God has you sow into. Some of you are sowing into your parents because they need care. And I just pray that the Lord would help us see from the potential and perspective of the seed. And some of some of you under the sound of my voice who will be watching on the online later, you might be discouraged because you feel like you've sown seeds for many years, just like I had, and you're just not seeing much from it. But God wants to sow another seed right now in this moment. And I just felt like the way we were to end is, and I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable and it's kind of a cozy crowd today, but would you just come down to the altar if you say, I'm gonna sow the seed of my life right now, that all I have, Lord, is yours. And only if you sense the prompting of the Lord. Lord, I wanna sow into the ground. I don't want to hold back. Lord, I want to see through the potential of the seed. Lord, you know the desert areas that are represented in each and every person that has come down. And God, I pray that you would give them eyes to see, Lord, 
the potential of the seed and you would help them to know they have all the seed they need to succeed. Come on, just lift up your hands and receive that. Lord, you've sown so much into us. You've sown your grace. You've sown your sufficiency. You've sown your strength, God. And now we want to be sowers. And I believe you're saying over us too, we're going to also be reaping because we have a lot of seed in the ground, Real Life Church. We have a lot of seed in the ground. And so Lord, as we wait for your timing, Lord, we keep our, the ground of our heart tender and sensitive. And wherever you're asking us to sow again, Lord, to sow your word around the world, locally, in our homes. Oh, husband, sow the word into your wife. Sow the word into your children. Sow the word. Sow the word. Because I'm reaping through my children. The way they can articulate and convey the word of God, the anointing on their lives astounds me. I'm reaping from that because of seed sown. Just have your way, Lord. I want to pray for Fairfield Christian School too, Lord. Many seeds. Can I pray for you? I just want to pray for Fairfield. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? So Jesus attends Fairfield Christian School and God stirred and ignited him for worship about a year and a half ago. <laughs> and that's because seeds have been sown. And we just want to pray that many more sons and daughters would rise up with the fire of the spirit, with a heart and a passion to worship, Lord, to pursue you at all costs, Lord, to deal with the root issues, Lord, that would inhibit them. God, as we've had a harvest through the years, God, we're asking that as we plant even more seeds, that you would increase the harvest of righteousness, that a sound would be released of worship, Lord, from those hearts, God, that would penetrate the atmosphere of this community and it would bring a refreshing, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. sacrifice this is what I believe the Lord would say as we just close is you know there's going to be people that are going to walk through these doors and they're going to just be a package of seed and it's going to take people who have sown seed to recognize that's right. and see the potential see that's what Christ saw in us when we were still sinners That's right. he died for us and he became the seed, the first seed to go into the ground so that we could walk into life and as we go into this new kingdom builder year I am just believing God to do exceedingly abundantly what beyond what we get ask or thank because we're seed sowers we're seed sowers and we believe that everyone deserves to know Jesus everyone and we want to make that happen and so as you're as we close this service I want to remind you um, that not only has God given you seed to sow because he's the one who gives it 
but God will give you the ability to do that. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the insight. And so we hope that you've been encouraged by all the messages from week one on generosity, Will's message, Jeff's message last week on damage, and then today, Renee's powerful message of being seed sowers, that it has spoke to your heart. It spoke to your heart because today before anyone got here, a man heard the worship team getting ready for the service, walks to the door next week, you potentially could bring him, his family, and his seven kids. So listen, we need to sow into our kids' ministry. Yes. Yes. Come on, we need more than prayer. We need workers. Yes. We, 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 we got to roll up our right. sleeve. And see, when, when the harvest time comes, we have to see there's different seasons for different fields. That's right. So sometimes it's going to be in the children's ministry field. And sometimes it's going to be in the youth ministry field. Sometimes it's going to be a, in the worship ministry. But there's going to be seasons and time where we have to roll up our sleeves. That's and right. we have to step That's into right. something right. that sometimes we may not know what we're doing in that field. But we just say yes. Because we're seed sowers. So, I don't know who, what, who that word was for. Maybe it was someone online. But I just believe God needs to, we need to sow our time. We need to sow our prayer. But we also need to sow the resources that we've been given. And so today we want to give you opportunity. And we're going to be putting this slide up. It's right here. It has a QR. Let's go ahead and put that back up there. You can scan that QR to run in a loop in a little bit, but you can scan that QR. Here's why we want to know who's partnering with us. We want to know who's building God's kingdom, not so that we can create a class of citizenship in this church. We want to be able to pray over that's your seed. That's right, that's right. We want to be able to honor that seed. If you don't want to give someday when I go and God says, good job, I'm just going to look at you and smile at you, those who didn't plant seed. Because I'm going to live in the fulfillment and the reward of the Lord. I'm going to know the well done and good and faithful servant. You did what I asked you to do. And I don't want to be one of those that's standing on the sideline with tears in my eyes because I know I could have done more. So we want to invest because we believe in making deserts gardens and so if you want to do that you can scan that qr let us know so that we can plan in our budgets and the different areas that we're going to be ministering to we also want to remind you about all of our giving links uh, if you are a giver of your tithe your kingdom builder offering the links are going to be on the screen behind me in just a minute and you can uh, go to any of those. You can actually text to give. It's coming up. Text any amount to 84321. Or in person, you can give by envelope. You can also sign up for all of our weekly news and updates. Um, you can go and you can be on our flock note text uh, thread so that you'll know exactly what's happening at every moment. If you'd like to receive those uh, text threads, you can also scan that QR right there. You can text RLC today to 84567, and when we send out a text alert, you'll be able to receive that. We're so glad that you're here with us. We're not going to close this altar. We want you to stay here as long as you want. Our prayer teams will be down here to pray with you. And uh, we're so excited. Thanks for being with us today. We're believing God's best for you as you live out real life. And also, life group this week, Tuesday evenings, and we're going to have a prayer and worship at our home on Friday, March 3rd. We're sowing seeds a prayer and worship. So if you can be there, come, 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 come. But linger, I, I just want to also uh, come down and lay hands on you as well over this word um, for those that would want that. So if you can just continue to play.